All right, in this video, we are talking about hyperthermia and how hyperthermia can be a meaningful addition to your cancer journey. Let's get into it. All right, we're talking hyperthermia. Uh, we're talking the good kind of hyperthermia. So if you've heard that word before, we'll talk about the difference and uh, why what we're talking about is good. Before we get into that, I just want to reiterate once again, I am not a doctor. Nothing I say should be taken as direct medical advice for your situation. We are just sharing what we have learned and hope that it helps you in your journey and your conversations with your team of doctors. With that in mind, this is the third video in a series that we're doing. If you are just coming in now, you can go back, the links will be below, to our first video on the science of how heat affects cancer. Uh, and then our second video talks about saunas as a meaningful option for you as well to introduce heat into your toolbox. But let's get into hyperthermia. This is Rachel. Uh, we spent three months down in Santa Monica last year receiving hyperthermia treatment. We'll talk about what type this is and uh, what that looked like. All right, so hyperthermia. The definition of this word is the condition of having a body temperature greatly above normal. Super simple. If you say hyperthermia when talking about getting cold, you're saying it wrong. And I say that because I, until our cancer journey, I've been saying it wrong my entire life. I've always said hyperthermia. Uh, that is hypothermia, hypo. That is getting too cold. Hyperthermia is getting too hot. And so um, that's what we're talking about, hyperthermia. It's typically associated with things like heat stroke or heat exhaustion. That's where you'll hear that term in, in the normal sense um, on, a, on a hot day. In this context though, what we're talking about is a medically induced condition that is on a focused location or a region of the body or the entire body in a very controlled way. So we're using the condition of hyperthermia to bring about a result that we're going for. Okay, so there are three different types of hyperthermia uh, that are each options that I wanna talk about. We'll dive into each of these in a second, but local hyperthermia is used to heat a very small area, uh, typically like inside a tumor, to a very high temperature. Regional hyperthermia is much lower temperature and is used to heat a region like an organ or limb or uh, an area of the body cavity. And whole body is self-explanatory. It's used to heat your entire body, bring your whole body to a fever point. So that's the goal for whole body hyperthermia. All right, let's dive into each of these individually to make sure that we understand kind of when we would use them in what circumstances. So within the, the local hyperthermia option, there are three types of local hyperthermia, external, intraluminal, and interstitial. I don't know why doctors use um, such complex and non-normative terms, uh, but they do. So we want to understand them because if you're sitting with the doctor, they're going to use these terms, probably not layman's terms. So external is simply for when a tumor is uh, located near or, or just under the skin. Essentially, they don't have to go inside the body to get to the tumor to apply this, this type of treatment. And so they use different techniques because they have such easy access to it. Intraluminal is when a tumor is located near a cavity, uh, like the colon, for example, where they still are not having to enter um, deep within the body. Um, they, they have an access point that makes it a little simpler to get to. Interstitial is for tumors that are located deep within the body. So that's the difference. If a tumor is within the liver, for example, that would mean interstitial local hyperthermia would be the method that you use. Both of the last two uh, use probes that are, that are inserted as if they were taking a biopsy, for example that similar probes are inserted to the center of the tumor. And then they use like microwaves or radio frequency or ultrasound waves to rapidly heat the center of that tumor from the inside out to much higher heats than other forms of hyperthermia. So we're talking 
upwards of like 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is um, more than even healthy cells can endure but because they're so localized, they're just frying that little tumor there um, and in large part leaving, it does affect the tissue around, but it's pretty minimized if the doctor knows what they're doing. And so that's the idea. This is definitely the most invasive of the hyperthermia options that we'll talk about, um, but a great option if, uh, if your doctor recommends it and your tumor is in the right location for it. We haven't shared much about what's, what's going on in our life, but actually last week we found from a PET scan that Rachel had two spots return in her liver. And so we're actually looking at this form of local hyperthermia. It's actually what we're talking about is something called radio frequency ablation, which is a type of local hyperthermia, where they're gonna go into the center of these two new tumors in her liver and fry the tar out of them. And so that's where we're, we're actually looking at this and, and learning about it together as, as we're researching for this video. And so it was really good timing for us to go, hey, what about this as an option? And kind of have a good understanding for it. So that's what's going on in our life. With that in mind, let's move on to the second form of hyperthermia, regional hyperthermia. This is where a medical device is applied to the skin and it kind of sets and rests on the skin like you saw in that picture of Rachel. And it sends heat waves internally and it's targeting the cancer in a region of the body. Most devices target about 109 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. That's really in the US. In Canada and many European countries, they do target higher temperatures. But in the US, they're a little more cautious and just try to hit that 109 degrees. The benefits of this type of hyperthermia really increase and compound upon each other with the frequency that you're able to do it. So when we were in California and Rachel was, was getting hyperthermia, um, she was getting it six days a week. And so she was heading to, we were, we were in San Pedro, California. She was driving the 405 to Santa Monica every day. And it was about a two hour procedure. Um, it wasn't uncomfortable necessarily. It kind of felt like a heat pad, but it was time consuming. And it was a commitment that we made to, to do that for three months. But it has been shown that, that the more often you can heat that area, the more effective that heat becomes on affecting the cancer and inducing an immune response and all the things we talked about in the science video about how heat affects cancer. Often this type of hyperthermia is tied with chemotherapy and radiation because they complement each other really well. All right, let's talk about the final type of hyperthermia. This is whole body hyperthermia. This is where they are externally trying to raise your core temperature. What that means is that it's often really uncomfortable. We've, we've spoken with a number of people that have went this route in their treatment plan, and, and they all talk pretty consistently about how uncomfortable it is, but it can be really valuable as well. So it's, it's trade-offs. Um, because it's so uncomfortable, it often comes with sedation of some kind to just help with that comfort level. It does appear to be a great option for metastatic cancers when local hyperthermia and regional hyperthermia are not good options, this can be a way of introducing heat to your toolbox that can be effective. It's not approved in the US yet. Uh, there's a lot of studies happening and uh, different universities are using it. Uh, it is used pretty widely outside the US. And so I think it's likely that we're on a path in the US to approval. Just um, often the US seems to be a number of years behind the rest of the world when it comes to more natural treatment options for cancer. And we will not get into why, because that's a, a whole other discussion and many theories about why that's the case. For whole body hyperthermia, they're often using either uh, heated blankets or warm water immersion or uh, things like thermal chambers, think like a, a large incubator to bring that whole body temperature up. And it's done typically under the supervision of a nurse or a doctor uh, to ensure that the patient is safe during this process. All right, I wanna pull up a chart that talks about the effectiveness of hyperthermia when, in this case, coupled with radiation and chemotherapy. So 
uh, just orienting us to this chart, the light blue bar shows the response percentage rate for someone with a type of cancer that is just doing radiation or chemo. And then the blue bar is the same type of cancer, same demographic of patients, but uh, introducing hyperthermia to that radiation and chemo. So you see across the board, across many different types of cancers, see significant improved response rates. And again, if you wanna know why this is, cause I'm not surprised to see this, because we already talked about the effect of heat on cancer. All this means is this is a way of introducing heat and it works. And so depending on the type of cancer, you see more significant increases in effectiveness. Um, rectal cancer in particular, obviously sees this huge increase in responsiveness where every patient they studied had positive responses when they were using hyperthermia. Others have less of a difference, but still across the board, there is consistent improvement when using hyperthermia. So that's this chart right here is why we're talking about this. Because if you haven't heard about hyperthermia and your doctors haven't brought it up as even an option to consider, bring it up with them. Ask them why. See what your options are. See if insurance can cover it. See where a local hyperthermia treatment center may be. Um, often university hospitals may have them. You've got options and clearly the data shows it can be an effective tool in the fight against cancer. Okay, so I just wanna address real quick, what about hyperthermia without radiation or chemo? This is actually what we did. So when Rachel was doing hyperthermia, she was not regularly getting radiation or chemotherapy. We talked with the medical director at the facility about this. And what he shared was that a lot of the, all of the studies that have been done have been tied with radiation and chemo. So those are the, the numbers that we can really lean into from a scientific background um, to show the effectiveness. And so there just haven't been studies to show what hyperthermia alone does. Anecdotally, pretty consistently, this medical director that we spoke with and other doctors we spoke with have seen meaningful responses. Typically it's slower. And so you need, there's more commitment needed to see the benefit of heat alone without those more aggressive treatment options. And you would typically see less overall dramatic response, if that makes sense. And so um, if your goal is to take a natural only approach to your cancer journey, hyperthermia can still be a worthwhile tool to implement, but just keep those things in mind. Um, and that's why what I'm showing as, as charts and numbers is really tied to the traditional American cancer treatment options, plus hyperthermia. All right, so we've arrived at the end of our video. Just wanna share some final thoughts to wrap this up. Local hyperthermia, great for small tumors that are easily accessible. Regional, great for cancers located in a region of the body. So like for Rachel, the liver. Whole body is great for metastatic cancer that has spread across multiple regions that aren't good candidates for the, the prior two types of hyperthermia. So that is all that I have to say about hyperthermia. Didn't ever think I'd say that word so many times in a 15 minute span, uh, but there you go. Please let us know if there are other topics that you'd like us to address. We have done a lot of work to research and talk with doctors about a lot of different cancer topics. And that's our heart is to share with you what we've learned and hopefully this is helpful. Let us know below if you have other topics you want us to cover or if you have questions specific to this topic that we didn't cover. And with that, be blessed, be safe. Our goal is to empower you to advocate for yourself and feel the empowerment of knowledge in this fight against cancer.